From the Queen City, it's Snipe Bright with your host, Sterling Thrill. Tonight, we got Paul Snyder, Mona Lisa Music on the Keys, and I am your announcer, Big Mike. Let's give it up for the host of Night Bright, Mr. Sterling Thrill. <laughs> Are we getting there? It's kind of like one of those uh, one of those dubbed uh, action films. I would like to say jokes now. Yeah. Uh, all right, you guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight, right? We do appreciate it, man. This is episode eight of season two. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna give the audience better drugs because I need a better oh, response from that. No, but it's season eight, uh, episode two, vice versa. Set it backwards. Anyway, still rolling. Uh, thank you guys so much. For tuning in and uh, making this a thing. So thanks again, everybody. Uh, do y'all want to hear some jokes? Yeah. All right, cool, 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 cool. Um, you guys, Carly Rae Jepsen's uh, song, Call Me Maybe, was released on this day. Uh, now, I've always thought that song kind of sounds like a multi-level marketing pitch. Oh, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, hey, I just met you, and this is crazy, <laughs> but here's my product. Sell this, maybe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mon, I'm just saying the Roots would have played the song behind me when I was saying I'm just gonna be on. You don't have Roots money. We ain't got Roots money. There you go. Thank you so much. Well, someone who we might have Roots, though. huh? We got Mona though. Hey, that's a Roots song. Oh, you got. You got right. me. You got me. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. You know, I did see him in concert, and I've been at Tonight Show twice, so I have seen him several times, more. but I didn't get the reference. I'm sorry, Mona. You forgive me. I'm trying to be funny, man. Yeah. <laughs> and you are doing a fan. You know what? I'm on it. Me too. I'm trying to. Uh, today <laughs> is a Young Jock's birthday. It's Young hey! Jock's birthday. Now, it's probably been a while since you heard that name. Uh, and that's because his career is only consists of two things. Uh, love and hip hop. <laughs> 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 Plus, he's over 40 and not an athlete. So he ain't young or a jock. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if this monologue ever reaches Young Jock, uh, Chris Woolley wrote those jokes. We're going to say that. Uh, speaking of uh, uh, music, Taylor Swift announced that she'll be releasing a new album next month. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> and every one of our male writers was scared to write a joke about that. So yeah. we're, <laughs> we are not going to do that. Um, uh, Mona, did you see this? Did y'all see that uh, they're releasing a new horror film, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey? That's rude. <laughs> Well, you, that, that is something you can say. Some people are saying, oh, dear. <laughs> I don't know why the characters are going on a killing spree, like why the kid character is going on a killing spree. I guess Eeyore's depression finally got the best of it. Oh, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys in the news, did y'all see that a woman was trying to enter the U.S. with hundreds of pounds of undeclared cheese? Yeah. But then Ted Cruz found his passport. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you guys, a Virginia police recently arrested a naked man for terrorizing women on a walking trail. Yeah, and I believe it or not, I heard this story for the first time from a newsflash. Because <laughs> 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 he was naked, a newsflash, that's right. That's right, Virginia authorities slowly approached the naked man and said, um, Mr. Biden, you're needing the Oval Office. Can you uh, please? All right. We made a joke, Ted Cruz. We just do both sides. We do both sides. Uh, did y'all see that a botch... Um, uh, cosmetic tattoo uh, on a budget. This lady got a cosmetic tattoo on a budget. Uh, left a Thai woman with four eyebrows. Well, yeah. Uh, I don't know why she complained. I wish I could get extra hair on my head. That would be <laughs> beneficial. Um, you guys, a Chinese gaming company appointed the world's first humanoid robot as its CEO. Yeah, that really happened. Inspiring the new film, Robo Boss. Oh. <laughs> in theaters, Christmas, 1983. Um, you guys, a man uh, that was accused of selling body parts on Facebook was recently arrested. Yeah. And he tried to give the post a thumbs up, but authorities had already seized all the evidence. <laughs> uh, you guys, it's National Pepperoni Pizza Day. Yes. Uh, are y'all hungry for more holidays this week? Check it out. Listen, this is crazy. Uh, we got some fun ones. Today is National Pepperoni Pizza Day. Tomorrow is National Pecan Cookie Day. 
Thursday is National Ice Cream Cone Day, and Friday is Great American Pot Pie Day. Ooh. None of those are a joke. So naturally, and this is actually on the calendar, Saturday is Family Health and Fitness Day. Because <laughs> <laughs> we didn't walk after all that. I mean, after the week I just had with all those holidays, uh, that needs to be National Snack and Sleep Day, yeah. is what it needs to be. I'm ready. What, what are you doing? I'm, I'm ready for our game. That, that happens later in this show. Oh. Huh. Cool. You're just going to stay there? Uh, okay. All right. Fine. Uh, look, Zuckerberg recently... I have a question. Oh, uh, Charlotte's number one comedy fan, Shayna Kashner, everybody. Shayna Kashner. Yeah. Hi. So, could I tell everybody about the art that I sell? The interview part happens later. In the show? It's a whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Shane, we'd love to have you on, but we already booked up tonight. Oh, well. Well, how can I tell people that my art is sold at Sleepy Poet Antique Mall at 6424 South Boulevard, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28217? I, I, I think you just did. Did I? <laughs> Shane Castro, everybody. Yeah. And Paul Baeza. Okay, I'm going to get back to the monologue as long as no one else has any other questions. I have a couple uh, questions. Oh, snap. <laughs> Night Bright News correspondent uh, Stuart Lately, everybody. Thank you. What do you think about fellow late night host David Letterman leaving his talk show network? Oh, snap. Leaving his, he's, he's leaving Netflix? No, he's leaving NBC to start his own late night show oh. called The Late Show on CBS. Do it. That that happened like thirty years ago. Um, <laughs> All right. Well, how do you think this move is going to affect our senior halls? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that doesn't go well, brother. That does not go well. Uh, do you think David Letterman would buy my art? I, I don't. I, I does don't. David Letterman want to play the game with me? Oh, I, I <laughs> Paul, you're not the guest tonight. Paul Snyder is the guest tonight. Oh, thanks, Sterling. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing right now? Let's, like, you don't come out till later. Have, have, has anyone here seen the show? I saw the episode I was on. Same. Uh, Paul, uh, just go go away until later. Paul, you don't come out until the game later. Shayna, thank you for supporting local comedy, and thank you so much for selling your art. We appreciate that. Which would make a good Christmas present. Uh, Yes, Shana, your art would make a good Christmas present. You know what else would make a great Christmas present? What? An investment. Okay. I have sources that are telling me right now that there is a new product on the market that is stuffed with financial potential. Now, it's made by a company called Ty, and they're coming out with this product. It'd be an amazing gift, and the product is called Bean Babies. Bean Babies. They're my entire portfolio. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Baeza, Stuart Laley, Shana Kasher, everybody, and Paul Snyder, okay? okay. No, no, oh my gosh, no. No, you come out later, oh my gosh, you guys, we got a great show for you, that guy is here. Give it up for the one and only Miss Mona Lisa Music. I don't want to see you run naked out in the streets, out in the streets. I don't want to see you attack David Letterman out in the streets, out in the street. Yes, he did leave NBC 30 years ago. Yes, he replaced Arsenio Hall, the only black man with a show. Hey, Sterling, how in the world did we get this thing to look like my classroom in here? Everybody's running around looking Virginia naked. Oh, listen, music, everybody! Fantastic! That was so good, friend. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, How man. you been? I've been. I've been all right. It's been forever since I've seen you. It's been a whole week, hasn't it? It's been a whole week, and uh, hope you didn't mind all my friends jumping into monologue. Like, what was that about? Man, that is just like my classroom, literally. You were saying that. You were like, saying that. Like, I talk, they get up, they yeah. move, 
yeah. the swing from the chandeliers. Okay, what kind of class are you teaching? You teach school at Jumanji? Like, what are you talking about? I teach Hunger Games. Oh, all right. all right. Wow, bro. Which kid ain't going to make it? Which one? Out them now. They already kick people off the island. Either. Oh, wow. All right, cool. By the end, I'll have like two. You have two kids? All right, what's your favorite one? <laughs> uh, if you guys don't know, Mona Lisa teaches students uh, a couple different... Well, she can tell you about it, won't you? But she teaches students. So every time we talk about kids, you don't have, you're not like a mama with a bunch of babies, right? Absolutely not. You should... <laughs> that, would be, that would get me killed by my you, own mama. Your mama would kill you if you had babies? Yeah. There's a lot of death happening uh, here. I don't understand. Oh, oh, my husband said he'll your, kill me. Your husband said he'll kill you if you have babies? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. All right. So there's too much family drama happening there. Uh, well, look, I appreciate all that you do, but um, uh, all you do for the show, but you do a lot of other stuff, too. I do. So tell me, what's some other stuff you got going on, Mom? Well, I know we talked about last week doing a festival in the park. That was highlighting some of the kids that I yeah. work with. Um, this project is kind of my baby project in that um, I've written a bunch of music and commissioned a bunch of music for a stage play called okay. Damage Woman's Blues. And that's going to be happening September 23rd, 24th, and 25th at the Sika Center in Winston-Salem. Oh, and okay. So, and we don't reach out to Winston-Salem. They don't have YouTube in uh, Winston, I don't those think. Those are lies <laughs> because at my last Winston-Salem gig, somebody walked up to me and they were like, I know you, Mona Lisa. You're from Night Bright. Oh, oh, hey, that's awesome. That's awesome. So no, that Winston's fun. dope. Actually, I was in Winston not too long ago, and I'm going to be up there. Just, I'm sorry, Winston-Salem, to the one fan in Winston-Salem. No. Uh, yeah. But your play is going to be there. Where is it again? Where At the Sika Center. You know, the fancy building near like my Angela. Oh, okay. House. All right. Cool. Where cool, Oprah cool. And them visit. Yeah, me and me and me and Oprah. We're uh, we're tight. You know, me and Stedman. We homies. You know what I mean? We uh, we play. Ain't nobody seen Stedman lately. Can I don't know where he's at. Update on where We've been at? playing croquet. I don't know <laughs> what, uh, what 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 does Stedman play. Um, so what is your? Are you going to be playing live during the during the stage play? I will. I'll, me and my band will be playing live during the stage play. Okay. I am not on stage. Let me just kind of preface that I am not uh -huh. on stage. I'm serving as music director, and again, I'm commissioned all of the music that you'll hear. So you hear a little gospel, you hear a little R&B, hear some spoken word, hear some pop, all and wrapped up in a story about a woman who is going after a married man. Oh, what in the Tyler Perry is that script about again? <laughs> you, uh, I, <laughs> I'm just playing. It's going to be a great show. What's it called? It's called Damage Woman's Blues, written by Irma Taylor. And I hope you guys come see it. We've got 7 o'clock shows and a 12 o'clock show on Sunday, September the 25th. Awesome. Go see Mona there, everybody. Give her Mona Lisa. Uh, also, though, uh, you should pay these sponsors a visit. Mike, what Please. do sponsors do? Night Bright is brought to you by The Like Button. Why don't you see what that thing does? And by Bright Entertainment, book trivia tag live, and other team building experiences for your remote teams now at brightentertainment.com. And by Bobby Kearns Productions. Capture your life, your career perfectly at bobbykearnsproductions.com. Now back to the most funny best friend of a, a guy can ask for. Back to Sterling and Mona. All right, thank you, Mike. And I am joined tonight early by our guest. Give it up for Paul Snyder, everybody. Yay! Paul, I got you out here to play a game. You ready to play a game? Not at all. Okay, great. <laughs> I want you to meet your opponent. He uh, interrupted me like uh, a bunch of times and now he made it on the show. I don't know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Give it up for Paul Baez, everybody. Baez, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, <laughs> thank you for coming and uh, talking about the us calling you Latinx. Sorry that oh. us, I apologize on behalf of all white people. <laughs> you should. All right, should. good, good, good. Uh, Paul Snyder's reason that said that. All right, so let me ask you guys questions. Uh, does anybody, uh, I mean, are you guys ever on shows together at all? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, that's the only question I had. So, uh, uh, well, guys, uh, this is why I got you both here. Um, uh, you both named Paul, you do comedy, and that's where the similarities end, right? I thought it would be fantastic if we uh, did a little game to find out who is the better Paul. And since fall is coming up, I thought, let's play a game where we find out who's the best Paul for fall. So let's play a game called... Better Paul Fall Challenge. Yeah! <laughs> All right. All right. And I love... 
I love you guys are clapping because you have no idea what we're going to do. But <laughs> <laughs> also, I love the angle. You don't understand this, but you have this curly halo. But Baeza is just doing this to see me the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> you're, like, you're, like a, you're like a helmet there in the way. All right, cool. So um, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take turns answering fall trivia questions in the first round. The person that gets the most questions correctly answered in the first round is going to get an advantage in our second round. Like they don't have to play? <laughs> Thanks, Paul. We thank you for that. Uh, you're going to get an advantage in the second round. The second round, uh, whoever wins that round is going to win the game. Okay, so even if you won the first round, it doesn't matter. You have to win the second round. But if you do win the first round, you will get an advantage. The first round is trivia. The second round is get Mona to guess it. Oh, I snap. Yeah, you're involved. All right, here we go. Paul, you are our guest. Snyder. Uh, Paul yeah. Snyder, you're our guest. So you're going to go first. I have some fall trivia questions. We're going to see how many you can get right. Okay, no one, say it out loud. If you know the answer, are you ready for your first fall trivia question? We're going to find out if you're the best Paul for fall. Better call Paul Fall. Better Paul Fall. I hate this game. All right, here we go. Uh, the name of it. Uh, <laughs> during the break, you said he would win. Why? He's wearing a flannel. I mean, like he is already prepared. Would you bring your blue ox with you? <laughs> <laughs> your first question uh, What autumn month is known for having more births than any other time of the year? Uh oh. September. Here's the right answer. One point for Snyder, everybody. All right. Next fall question. What month does daylight savings end? September. Is the wrong answer. It was November. All right. You don't get a point for that one. Next question is, aside from birds, what other flying creature begins to migrate in the fall? Bears. Oh, they're bears flying, the flying <laughs> creature. Flying bears. Flying bears. Flying bears. Flying bears. Flying bears. Flying bears. Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. That's absolutely correct. No, not at all. Wow. Flying bears. That is, uh, I feel like that should be the name of the band that you're in right flying now. Bears. You look like you're in the flying bears. Your next question. Uh, what is the full moon that occurs closest to the autumn equinox? What is that called? Full moon that happens right around the autumn equinox is called the... New moon. The new moon. My favorite Twilight, but not the right answer. Uh, I've never seen any of the Twilight series. The movie that I steal. What is it? It's the harvest. It is correct. Yay. You're not getting a point for that, though. I didn't do the rules that way, but that is right. The last question that you're going to have, Paul Snyder, uh, for an opportunity to win this round. Who is the goddess of harvest? <laughs> My wife? Your wife is the <laughs> goddess of harvest. That's correct. Uh, anybody, you want to steal that one, uh, Baeza? Is it, is it Athena? It's not. It's Demeter. Demeter. She's uh, really pretty, so you probably want to Demeter. Um, all right, Snyder, you got two. So really, Baeza, it's your chance to win more. You just got to get three all right. out of five. You ready to go? Fall trivia going to find out who's the better Paul for fall. Here we go. What date is the start of fall? September 19th or 20th. 19th is the last day of summer. Here's the thing. I copied and pasted this, and I didn't check it for this year. So we got to check it. All right, let's, Siri's going to answer this one. What is the first day of fall? I was right on the card. What was yours? 22nd. That is the right answer, oh. but you don't get a point for that. All right, no one gets a point. The answer is the 22nd. Baeza, your next question. What is another term for the start of fall? The solstice. There's a solstice in fall, but not the answer to that question. It is the autumn equinox. I already said that in the game. Oh. Next question. What are the three months of fall in the summer... <laughs> in the southern hemisphere or the three months of fall in the southern hemisphere spring there you go that is, <laughs> what months are those the answer was months we're looking for uh, uh march april may is the right answer we're gonna give it to you i don't care we're gonna give it to you there you go also uh uh, Shayna, who's, uh, who's happy to be in the monologue with you earlier, was mouthing over there. I saw an audience. She was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so just tag her in. Okay, here you go. So you got one. Uh, Baeza's got one, you guys. Hard game right now. One to two. Here you go, Baeza. 
What green pigment in leaves breaks down, which results in their colors turning to yellow and orange? Chlorophyll. Is the right answer. You are tied. <laughs> it came down to this, the tie-breaking question, to figure out who's going to get an advantage in the next game, and it is... According to a recent Journal of Consumer Research study, what type of movie is watched more often in the fall? Horror. Is what I thought too, but it's actually romantic, which means you guys tied so oh, far. Wow. Wow. No Ooh. one gets the advantage. You're each going to get 60 seconds for the next round. The 60 seconds, I'm going to give you three fall prompts right here on these tiny little scraps of paper. And you're going to charade those out. You can't talk. And you got to get Mona to guess as many as you can in 60 seconds. You ready to play? Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, neither one of you won. But you started the first. You started the last round first. So Baeza, you can be up first. Now head up to the monologue stage, everybody. Baeza, everybody. Give it up, Baeza. All right, Baeza. What you're going to do is you have a little prompt right here on the desk. And there's three fall items. You're going to charade those out, act those out. My friend Mona Lisa is going to guess them. This is get Mona to guess. You're going to have 60 seconds to get as many on that card as you can. Baeza, you ready to go? Mm -hmm. Mona Lisa, you ready to guess? It's a fall item. 60 seconds. Baeza, go. Pumpkin spice latte from Starbucks. <laughs> Traffic. Trick or treat. Church. Jehovah Witness. <laughs> Zom mummy. Mommy zombie, run, run away from the dead people. Oh God, Captain Hook looking out the ship. Where are we going? The Walking Dead. <laughs> uh, the Walking Dead? No, movie, black and white movie, Frankenstein. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> they, oh, Michael Myers, Halloween. Um, Jason, Freddy Krueger. Edward Scissorhands. Task <laughs> <laughs> uh, the friendly ghost. I'm running out of Just go to the next one, man. Go to the next one. <laughs> you eating from the tree of life? Adam and Eve? The <laughs> apple? Death? Christian's purgatory? David that was tough. <laughs> I don't know. You said, you say all the right words. What do you think he was doing with the apples? I don't know. In the fall. <laughs> Apple yes. Oh. The other one, you said all of them. What were all those things you were saying? You said <laughs> Freddy Krueger when you said, what are those? What are those? movies. <laughs> it was, I, that's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween. Freddy Krueger. He's Michael got Jackson. one. Give it up for Paul Bays, everybody. Yeah, we started off so strong. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think we're going to get along. Oh, yeah, yeah, you got it. All right. Oh, man. Switch, everybody. Switch. <laughs> switch. All right. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> All right, I, I was I was tracking with Alex. <laughs> I was tracking with you. Good job, okay. Baeza. We're gonna see uh, if uh, Snyder can get more than one. He hates charades, so it's gonna be fantastic. Uh, you got sixty seconds. You have three prompts. These are fall themed things, or if Mona's guessing, they might be. Who knows what they'll be? Remember when I was playing that game with other people, and I just kept guessing like Avengers. Thing? <laughs> it was like there's nothing Avengers on the game. So, yes. all right, here we go. I'm a dork. Uh, Snyder, you ready to play? <laughs> All right, 60 seconds on the clock. As soon as I can pull the clock up. And Mona, you ready to guess? Yes. Paul, go. Oh, snap. Trick or treat? Yes. Hey, that's one. Sweeping up dead folk. <laughs> Power, season three. <laughs> Sweep it, Cinderella. <laughs> we owe you no money. <laughs> I don't. What we Remember sweeping? the mark. <laughs> Rain down on me, melodies living. <laughs> it's in the fall, Mo. It's in the fall, Mo. <laughs> the great pumpkin from Peanuts. <laughs> no. What are we sweeping? <laughs> Go to the side. next one. Go to the next one. Go to the next one. Beatles, here comes the sun. Uh, next one. <laughs> oh. Okay, pegs in the hole. Mahjong. <laughs> Jack in the box. That was time. Oh. <laughs> Anybody guess the last Raking. one? Carving a pumpkin. Carving a pumpkin. Anybody oh. guess the one before that? Raking leaves. Raking leaves. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> You guys, <laughs> Paul Bates and Paul Snyder, everybody. Uh, oh, 
You guys tied. So we have to play again, everybody. Uh, Mona, thank you so much for your participation. What's your favorite thing to do in the fall? Is it the sweet, <laughs> sweet, 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 sweet dead body? Sweet, sweet, sweet body. dead body. My favorite thing to do in the fall is to shake the devil off. Yeah, well, that's, that's, everywhere. that's <laughs> what. Every September, the neighbors just come and die on my porch. Sweep them up. Sweep them up. Oh, my gosh. All right, you guys. So, um, <laughs> wow. Uh, it turns out in this challenge that uh, they're both the best Paul for fall, everybody. Yay! Give it up. Five to thank you for being here. Snyder, our guest, so we'll see you do stand up in a little bit. Give it up one more time for them, everybody. Be right back. All right. Thank you guys very much. Our guest tonight is so funny. He's actually uh, my road home. We actually uh, take trips a lot, uh, do comedy all over. This guy is fantastic and hilarious and you're about to be the judge of that because he's coming right now to do stand-up comedy give it up for the one and only mr paul snyder everybody all right you guys enjoying the show so far tonight we'll see <laughs> i think if there's one thing you guys need to know about me it is uh i'm a huge introvert and I left the house today, so yeah. <laughs> good for me. Yeah, I did, I did my Wordle, and then I came on in. <laughs> Important things first. Uh, though, introverts are my people, though, and I would yes. uh, ask by round of applause where the other introverts are here tonight, but uh, there's, there's no need. Um, <laughs> my, my people aren't going to applaud. I mean, we might give like half a head nod, and then... We're going to look right back at our shoes where it's safe. That is, <laughs> that is what my people are going to do. But uh, I, I've been working on it, though. I know I have to talk to more people, and so I've been I've been working on it, and I can say that I, I treat everybody the same, try to treat everybody the same. So it does not matter to me if you are the CEO of a Fortune 500 company or just a homeless person on the side of the road. I, uh, I am not going to talk to either of you. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to go. Uh, a couple weeks ago was my birthday, and my uh, my wife and I we walked up to Starbucks, and uh, there were all these people waiting in line, uh, waiting for their drinks, and just standing around. And my wife leaned over and whispered to me, "What if I told you I hired all those people to break out into a flash mob?" And I have never been more terrified in my entire life. <laughs> uh, that did not go well for me. Uh, as a as an introvert, though, um, I have not lived the most exciting life. I do not have a lot of life experience to talk about up here. I have uh, I've still never seen an episode of Game of Thrones, um, <laughs> largely because I do not want to get caught using somebody's HBO Max password. <laughs> tracking down on that, and I do not need that pressure in my life right now. So yeah, <laughs> I uh, I also I I went to uh, I went to private school, so I learned entitlement at a really young age. <laughs> uh, I would say like if I were gonna try to narrow down the edgiest thing I've done in life, I, it would probably be this. I have. Uh, well, I finished every round of antibiotic I've ever been prescribed. <laughs> a lot of people can say that. Uh, also, my high schooler and I uh, are the same size, so we can share clothes, which I think is very cool. Um, it is just a lot more embarrassing for her. So, <laughs> but we can do it. We can do it. Uh, I have. Uh, I've also. Um, I have never taken drugs, you guys. I. I don't. Um, I don't even know where to go to buy drugs. And um, usually at the end of every show, there is somebody willing to help me. So uh, <laughs> I say I thank you. I appreciate your support. Uh, I just don't think I would be very good at it. Uh, for instance, I don't. I don't know how much to buy. Um, and I am not good at the metric system. So uh, <laughs> somebody, somebody says a gram. Doesn't sound like much to me at all. I um, I don't know if like, you just kind of want to go all in with a kilo to start. You know, just uh, like get a pallet at Costco. Just fill that thing up and wheel it right out to the car. I just, I've heard that if uh, I get started, I am not going to want to run out. That's what I've heard. And, uh, my mama, my mama did not raise a quitter, so I would be in for a while. Uh, also, I don't, uh, I don't know how much drugs cost, so somebody's probably going to rip me off, take advantage of me, and uh, to be honest, I do not carry cash. 
So I'm going to have to write you a check. <laughs> and I'm going to have to ask you not to try to cash that till at least Friday. <laughs> I'm not get paid till Friday, and that is not going to go through right now. Um, also, I probably, I probably don't even know my drug dealer's real name. So I'm going to have to make that out to his street name, Little Puff Puff. Um, and I don't even know if he can cash that. Uh, I, don't know. I don't think Wells Fargo is going to let that one go through. So uh, I don't know. And then I, I feel like once it comes down to actually taking the drugs, I'm just going to embarrass myself. Um, like, I, like I, I'll see people at a nice restaurant, and they've got a, a lovely bottle of wine. They've paired that with a delicious meal, and I do not know what type of fish goes best with crack. <laughs> <laughs> Although I have been, a couple people at, at other shows have yelled out tilapia. So, uh, <laughs> so now if I'm at a restaurant and I, I see somebody at the next table order tilapia, I just assume they're a crackhead. So, uh, <laughs> know what else to think. So, really, I, I, I guess, I guess, I just tell you all guys all that to be able to wrap it up and tell you this. Um, I am not a lot of fun to hang out with. Um, <laughs> you guys probably figured that out a few minutes ago. It has taken me most of my life. Uh, in fact, I'm glad that I'm married because I am not a catch or a snack or. <laughs> Thick with two C's. I don't, I don't even know what you guys are saying right now. Um, I'm more like the human equivalent of Benadryl. You know, just uh, safe to use and, uh, for all ages. But some of you are going to probably get drowsy. All right, you guys, that is my time. My name is Paul Snyder. Thank you, guys. Paul Snyder, everybody. Keep it going. Great job, brother. Great job. More of Paul right after this. I'm here with Paul Snyder, everybody. Paul, great set, man. That was a great set, bro. Thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, well, dude, like I, you know, it's funny to interview you because uh, uh, we roll together a lot. We homies. So. It's not the word I use. That's yeah, not the word. <laughs> I don't use that word. <laughs> what would you call us? Uh, friends. Friends? Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm your friend. Yeah. I am man. Paul Snyder's friend, uh, everybody. Oh. Yeah. I'm such your friend. I'm going to tell you, you have like a little hair right here on your dude, cheek. I, the other I side. I felt it. I other felt side. it. Yeah. There you go. If I was really your friend, I'd have wiped it off You would have gotten it off. <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry. It would have licked your finger yeah, first. Exactly. And then got smudge off. Uh, is that the is that the first time I gave you COVID? Is that how I did it? <laughs> that's oh, how, that's how I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's get that out of the back. I mentioned yeah. it during the break that people were like, what? So Paul Snyder. Uh, survivor. Publicly, survivor. <laughs> Paul Survivor. I would publicly like to say, sorry for giving you COVID. Do you want to set... Do you want to tell us what happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were driving to Atlanta for a show, and you got a phone call. <laughs> and uh, you got off the phone, and you were like, I'm just going to let you know. That's my wife, and my daughter has COVID. But I, I feel good. I think, I think we're going to be fine. <laughs> and then you texted me the next day and said, I, I have COVID. <laughs> and then I texted you the next day and let you know I had COVID. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Thank it, you. It, it, you're welcome. It was so funny because we're in a we're in a Honda. Small, you know what I mean? We're in just a little Honda, car. and I'm sitting beside you, and I get the phone right. call. And it's like, uh, you you know, your daughter's got COVID, and I was like. I'm just looking at this guy next to me, just in this little car. Like we're far, farther away now than yeah. we were in that car. <laughs> exactly. And I'm yeah. just like, uh, plus we had made out the whole time yeah. before that. We, yeah, yeah. we had been so. sharing one straw. One, <laughs> one big slurpee. The whole uh, way down. <laughs> just slurp buzz. Just slurpy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, oh. Oh, man. I am so, oh, gross. Oh, man. It's no PG. I, it's PG right Yeah, there. PG right there. Oh, well. <laughs> So uh, thank you for that story. Yeah. I um, sorry that I gave your family COVID. Does your does your family like me now? Um, I mean, yeah, they're fine. Yeah, I, mean, I thought you'd be like they never did. <laughs> um, well, Paul, man, uh, you've been like just a cool guy. Why do you think we're homies or friends? You would say. Why do you think we've connected? Because we're not like 
similar. We're exactly. Not, we're not similar at all. <laughs> not, even, not even a little bit. <laughs> what What do you think it is? Uh, you gave me a compliment once. And that's all it took for introverted stuff. Yeah, that's all uh, it didn't about your, take a lot. Yeah, it didn't take a lot. What are you... Um, do people ask you about, when they see your set, just come up to you and ask you about being introverted for real? Some people will ask if I really am. Mm -hmm. uh, and then some people will approach me and I'll take like half a step back and they'll know. They'll know. <laughs> they'll, they'll, know. they'll know. They'll, they'll know. know. Exactly. Yeah. That is fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, uh, we met Dusty Slay together. We did. On your birthday-ish. Yeah. Around. It was right at your birthday. Like within a few hours. We met Dusty Slay as a comedian. Um, Dusty wasn't able to be here tonight. He's probably... Regular viewer. Yeah, he watches all the time. Hey, shout out, Dustin. <laughs> and um, uh, we we met him, and I forgot the point of that story. I have ADHD. <laughs> I was going to bring it up for a reason. What was the point of the story? Oh, I was talking to him. Name dropping? I'm just name dropping. There you go. I would never name <laughs> drop. You know, I met Fallon. And, uh, <laughs> twice. And I... Uh, <laughs> uh, have you met any celebrities? Uh, I mean, yeah. I've met, yeah. Name one? Michael Jordan. You met Michael Jordan? Yeah. Why are we talking about other things? What's your Michael Jordan story? Uh, I was in middle school, and he was a rookie with the Bulls. And uh, we're not doing math right now. Oh, I'm definitely. <laughs> no, doing quick I math. gotcha. You're doing I quick, gotcha. You're doing I gotcha. Quick, you're doing quick math so you were in some sudden. school, <laughs> elementary, middle, college, somewhere. Yeah. yeah. He was on the Bulls, And though. he was doing, uh, he was doing, he wasn't super, super famous yet. And he was doing, like, a meet and greet. At, wow. Outside a grocery store, I stood in line. Outside a grocery store, stood in line, met him, got his autograph. Wow! Yeah, I I um I was in this little program and basically no, that's a long story that Bob Boo cut out anyway. <laughs> I I did this thing where uh, we got to take a trip to Charlotte to see the Hornets. Uh, we didn't live in Charlotte at the time when I was a kid, and we got to see the Hornets. And um, they did this youth thing where like one of the Hornets players, uh, uh, we got to meet him before the game. It was just us in the stadium with the Hornets player. And he's like, you guys can be good kids. You can do this. And you know, one of those like youth advocacy, like he's trying to teach us how to do right. He's like, you work hard, you can come and do this. And then he did a dunk for us. So he dribbled from half court, ran up and did a dunk and missed. And that is my Hornets basketball player story. I was about to ask if it was Muggsy Bogues, but it wasn't, but it wasn't. anybody famous. I can't remember his name, um, but I mean, it was a Charlotte Hornet back in when I was in high school. So, um, Bobby, I'm gonna give you permission to cut that story. Uh, <laughs> all right, cool. Well, look, uh, well, Paul. Uh, although I love talking about Michael Jordan, uh, how long have you been doing stand-up comedy? Did you start that in middle school too? <laughs> no, uh, three years. Three years, a little over three years. No, -uh. yeah, no, because yeah. I've known you for uh, no. No, it was 2019. What got you into comedy? Uh, I as I mean, if you I've never always, told me the story. I've always been interested in it yeah and in high school i was voted funniest oh wow really so it came time in life i just you know it's time to step up wow you know? so three people went to your high school yeah. is what it was <laughs> <laughs> um so for you were you like a senior superlative yeah it was here's a story that maybe you won't cut bobby i actually look <laughs> this true story when i was a senior in high school i ran for class clown I ran. ran. I ran you for did, class you clown. Did, you did a whole. Uh, <laughs> I ran. I and did a campaign lost? and I lost. Yeah, yeah I lost. Yeah, thank you. That really did happen. That's like the perfect comedy story. Um, all right. I'm so, <laughs> let me ask you a question, Paul. In your opinion, uh, what do you think is like the best uh, personality trait for someone who wants to do stand up? I, I mean, I don't. I don't know that there is a best personality because everybody. I mean, everybody has their own journey and their own story. Mm -hmm. um, it's just. It's just you know, kind of kicking fear in the face and actually getting up on stage. Kicking fear in the face. Yeah. Wow. That's very violent. Man, I got a little excited right yeah. then. I like yeah. it. All right, very kicking violent. fear in the face. Yeah. Uh, speaking about fear, you talk about being an introvert, obviously, yeah. in your comedy. Do, uh, have have you, like, done shows or met other introverted comedians? Yeah. I mean, I think there's more than people think there are. Oh, they're out there. I think they're, they're out there. Like roaches. Like when you see one yeah. roach, you know There's, they're, yeah. They're, they're there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I mean, I don't talk to them. But. Do you have, are there other comedians that have introverted jokes and stuff like material and stuff and you guys talk about it at all? Uh, no, well, we don't talk. Yeah, we yeah. don't, that's introverted. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we might text later, but we don't really talk. We don't talk it. at all. Uh, there's a, there's a couple, uh, that I've talked to about material. Yeah. There's a couple people that have had jokes. I was like, man, I wish, wish I had had that joke. Oh, wow. Would you ask him for it? Hey, can I have no, your joke? No. <laughs> You're not going to need that. No, I'm just, no, no. I'll take that yeah, from you. Yeah. 
Uh, let me ask you this. If, uh, if you were to write a comedy book about your journey, what would you call it? Uh, for my journey right now, I might, I might just call it, I left the house for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Paul, uh, wait, no, Paul, uh, <laughs> Paul, you are. One of the Pauls. Paul, what's up with these emojis? So we asked people to put up their aesthetic. <laughs> yeah. What are the aesthetic? What you got? Uh, I mean, there's just the, just the fear. And, oh, okay. Uh, scare. Yeah, scare. Uh, I don't really see anybody, uh, you know. And uh, I do clean comedy, so. Oh, a little, a little angel. angel. A little angel under there. Oh, because yeah. you don't see people, but we're all watching you, Yeah, Paul. All yeah. right. Well, that is fantastic. Yeah. Paul Snyder, you guys. Uh, where can we find you online? Or uh, in person? When's your next show? Uh, I'll be on in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Okay. Uh, September 29th. Oh, okay. That place yeah, right the, there. The it's place, right there. Yeah. It's right. Is it the one you're, I told you about? Yeah, I'm doing get, it the week you, before. Yeah. Yeah. And did I get you that booking? Yes, you yes, did. I did. That's right. That's your, what booking did you get me? That's your COVID payment, man. <clears throat> no, yeah, exactly, sure. exactly. Uh, so I'm paying Paul back for COVID. You actually did. You hooked me up with that guy. I'm doing a lot of those shows uh, in Greensboro stuff. So I have this show. In fact, you can come see me. I know it's your interview, but you can come <laughs> see me right here. I'm just playing. You forgive oh, me you, for that. You do the thing. I'm just hoping that somebody puts are graphics you doing, here. Are you doing a thing? A but it'd be really great if there was Sorry. no graphics. It's just me pointing, <laughs> yeah. just me pointing, pointing, the pointing the domino. That's it. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, Paul, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. Is there any other question you wish I'd asked? No. <laughs> thank you so much. Give it up for Paul Snyder, everybody. All right, you guys. We're going to wrap up this episode like we wrap up every episode by hearing it once again through the ears and eyes and keys of Miss Mona Lisa Music, everybody. <laughs> Can you believe I always feel like somebody watching me? You would look at me taking a step forward. I'm gonna take five steps back. Won't you relax? You don't have to get that close to me. I'm introverted, yes, indeed. Don't have <laughs> Get closer. <laughs> Paul Lisa Music, everybody! Oh, so for big reaction. Give it up for our guest, Paul Snyder! And thank you for all the people that stopped by today. It was so many of them, I don't know the names, but thank you, Shana Cashner and Stuart Laley and Paul Baez and everybody. We'll do it again next week. Bobby Kerr's our guest next week. And one more time for Mona Lisa Music! And Paul Snyder. Thank you guys. Good night. <laughs>